Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Reepy Rand, and today we are going to be looking over the last of our beginner guide perks and this is the survivalist, the jack of all trades perk in killing floor 2. And would this be a good perk for players just getting into this game? Well let's take a look at the strengths of survivalist and then go over some builds with survivalist. So for passives the survivalist gets 0.6% weapon damage per level. This goes for every weapon in the game. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, survivalist gets passive damage towards everything. So that's pretty cool. We get global resistance 1% per level. So you get 1% damage reduction from once again, everything, uh, per level. This actually makes, uh, survivalist quite tanky, especially the more you level them up. I mean, at max level, you'll have 25% damage resist towards everything, which is pretty nice. You also get 1% of body armor every level. Uh, this starts out this this is just what you start out with there is also a passive with this that is you will not take any damage so long as you have armor on unless it's sonic damage it works the same way that uh swats um heavy armor training works so you get more armor and your armor has to break before it can hurt you just passively which is great you have Z time reload similar to gunslinger three percent per level so during Z time you reload your weapons faster this is best used if you can reload at the very end of the Z time that way you can reload your weapon very quickly and this works for every weapon as well which makes various weapons feel way way more responsive than they normally would be um, you also have faster weapon switch speed i believe this is by 30 or 40 percent so you can switch your weapons out much faster and it makes survivalists feel so much better than they did before just this little update really nice in my opinion so let's go over some builds for survivalist so the first build that we're going to be looking at is the build that i tend to go with with survivalist um, however keep in mind there's no real right or wrong way to build survivalist just build to whatever weapons you wish to use or whatever weaknesses your team needs to make up for that's the main way you're going to be playing survivalist so for level five i go with heavy weapons training this is to increase reload speed uh, with demo sharpshooter and support weapons I just really like demo, sharpshooter, and support weapons. This is your rifles, your shotguns, your explosives. Um, you could, of course, go with the tactical reload, which is commando, gunslinger, and SWAT, but this build will not be using them, so we're going to go with heavy weapons training. For level 10, I go with melee expert. This increases melee attack speed by 20%, as well as inflict 75% more damage with your melee weapons, and you get 25% faster move speed when you have any melee weapon out. This also counts for your knife, which is always handy. And then for level 15, I go with ammo vest. I always start the match out with ammo vest um, simply because you get to carry 15% uh, more ammo with all of your weapons and your grenades become meta grenades, which are some of the best grenades in the entire game, if not the best grenade in the game. However, you can switch ammo vest out later into the match, uh, depending on what you want for your loadout. We won't need it for this build, but other builds certainly do need it where you could go with weapon harness, which increases your carrying capacity by five. So you go from 15 to 20, allowing you to carry a ton of different weapons. And then your grenades become Molotovs. Molotovs are also a fantastic grenade in this game. If you're going to go beyond this at level 20, I tend to take a uh, spontaneous Zed explosion. This just makes it so if you kill any Zed, there's a 30% chance that it will explode, damaging all nearby Zeds and stunning them. This is a really great ability. You can stun large uh, crowds of enemies pretty easily with this. Make things go boom isn't bad because you do get uh, explosive resistance and your explosions are bigger. So if you're going with more exploding weapons, you can do that. Um, I tend to like Zed Explosion a bit more though. And then at level 25, uh, I usually go with Madman. However, Lockdown is really good too. Um, Shooting three times faster, so you're practically shooting at real speed during Z time is nice, but also being able to stun everything in Z time is nice. So, whatever you want to go with, it's your call. All right, so your starting weapon with Survivalist can be anything that's a starting weapon for any other class. So you just get a random weapon of somebody's class. In this case, I got the dual 1858s. These are a pretty strong weapon. Um, you could of course get things like the MP7, the AR-15, the Winchester, anything that you could get with any other class you could get here. It's now it is true that certain weapons uh, are kind of better to get with this. The best ones that you could get, uh, assuming you're running this build, would be something like the Krovel because you have uh, melee you're expert, out, so you just do more damage and you move quicker with it. Um, or something like the Winchester. 
because the Winchester can go for either uh, level 5 perk, since it counts as both a gunslinger weapon and a sharpshooter weapon. You could also say the same thing with one 1858 as well, though. A single 1858 counts both for a sharpshooter weapon and for a gunslinger weapon. You will probably want to pick it up after you toss it on the ground, though, or toss it to a friend if they need it. Um, this can be pretty useful. You could also start out with just a uh, generally handy weapon like the medic pistol. The absolute worst weapon that you could get as survivalist for your starting weapon is the cock and burn. You don't get any real bonuses with it. It's not really a great weapon to get. Unfortunately, um, it's a great weapon for firebug, but survivalist really can't use it as well. Um, you don't have any sort of, you know, bonus ground fire damage or just bonus fire damage. So if you don't have access to the medic grenades or the molotovs at level 15, uh, then it will just give you the high explosive grenades from the commando. These would be your highest damaging uh, grenades that you have, but you can blow yourself up fairly easy with them. So you do have to be careful with that. You can also light yourself on fire very easy with the molotovs. So if you've been playing a lot of firebug and you're used to that, be really aware that you can burn yourself to death pretty easily. Just like every other class, you do start out with the 9mm pistol, which you also get bonus damage for, which is nice. And you have your signature knife, the Gore Shiv, which is actually probably one of the better knives because you can have weapons training early on, giving you bonus mobility uh, and bonus damage with it. So it's actually not a bad weapon to use in the first couple of waves if you would like to save some extra dosh, uh, save up for a weapon that you're really looking forward to, or save some ammo so that you can use it in later waves. So the general tips for survivalist are generally do everything that every other class can do. So keep in mind that you can block and parry. You won't get something like a, a you know, a parry uh, buff like Berserker, but you can block and parry better than most classes can. Um, you can also heal allies better than most classes can, thanks to having healing grenades in this set. You can also use these healing grenades as offensive weapons putting them in choke points and waiting for small zeds to fall into them. Like most classes, you should be on the lookout for weapons that you can find into the early waves, as well as any sort of armor or uh, ammo boxes. You can make use of all of these very effectively. You arguably can make the most use out of them out of everybody in the team because you, you can use back. every weapon fairly Don't effectively. Um, for this build, the very first weapon that I will be buying is going to be the HRG Kaboom Stick. The Kaboom Stick is an incredibly powerful weapon. It counts as a demo weapon, so it works perfectly with this build. It cannot inf inflict uh, friendly fire damage on yourself, which is great. And it does just a insane amount of damage. Last this weapon chance. is considered pretty I overpowered um, by practically everybody. Uh, it is an extremely strong weapon, and it's a very good weapon to use. It really works well against just about everything. You can fire one barrel at a time or fire both barrels with its secondary fire. If you jump into the air while firing both barrels, you will send yourself flying, just like the uh, supports double barrel or if you were using this on demo. So this does give you extra mobility, which is pretty useful. It's incredibly strong against crowds. It's incredibly strong against flesh pounds. Um, it's not as strong against something like Scrakes, but it can still work against Scrakes because it does just have enough raw damage to hurt them. And it's overall just a great weapon. It's also a very beginner-friendly weapon, since you can't injure yourself with it and you don't need to be the most accurate. Just shoot in the general direction and realize that this weapon is a pretty short-range weapon. It's really not a... It's really not going to be useful in longer ranges. Um, also, different from demo with this weapon is that you do not have the sonic ground resistance. So, sirens can be a little bit of an issue with this weapon. You're going to have to wait for them to stop screaming before you can shoot them with it. But flesh pounds die extremely easy. Uh, let's talk about the Zeds that you should be worried about as survivalists like we've done with all the other classes. Um, this is going to depend heavily on what weapons you take. If you take a lot of fast shooting, low damage weapons like submachine guns or assault rifles, you won't be doing as well against big Zeds like flesh pounds and scrapes. However, if you take weapons that are good against those uh, particular uh, enemies, like if you take something like the railgun, uh, 
then that's not as much of an issue. You can really tailor your loadout to whatever you want as survivalists. So you don't necessarily have any inherent weaknesses. Um, you only really have strengths. So the second weapon I would recommend with this loadout is the Hemoclobber. Uh, this could be both an advanced and a beginner loadout. You can upgrade both these weapons. They both scale fairly well with upgrades. And I believe if you fully upgrade them, you will have... Um, one weight left so you can also if you wanted to uh, get yourself a medic pistol medic pistol is a great weapon it's super cheap it's uh gonna pay for itself by you healing your teammates and it's a great weapon the hemo clobber is also a great weapon and another weapon that's considered kind of overpowered this is really good in crowded areas it out choke points and if your team needs a tank um this combination works really well for tanking at the front line because you can easily light attack small zeds with this um, that really helps at a choke point as well as block uh, the hemoclomber's second secondary attack it's heavy attack is a big overhead swing that causes this healing cloud this healing cloud does a ton of damage to all zeds around it as well as heal you and your allies and it will deal damage over time to all Zeds Careful, that were caught in the explosion that didn't immediately die. Uh, thanks to the poison, the poison effect also causes big Zeds to panic. So if you hit a Scrake or a Flesh Pound with it, this weapon is also very strong against them. Uh, since it also has an explosion effect, it is also really good at fighting um, crowds as well. And like I said, if you need to be the tank of your team, you can do that with this. Run to the front lines. You know, start blocking, maybe hit a big Z or two with your heavy attack. And then you can quickly switch to your uh, kaboom stick here. And then either try just blasting them to death there. Or you can use it secondary fire to easily get to safety. You can also run faster with the medic bat out. So if you just need to outrun something, like say a flesh pound's chasing you down. Um, and you don't have the time to heal. It might be better just to keep, uh, keep running, trying to get away from it. These two weapons um, are fantastic for both beginners and advanced players. This is pretty much my most common played um, survivalist build. And it is fantastic. You can easily beat Hell on Earth with this loadout. No problem, regardless of what kind of boss or enemies you get. As stated, it works really well against Scrakes, Flesh Pounds, any of the bosses really. Um... Especially if you get a boss like the King Fleshbound. This loadout is incredibly strong against him because you have a melee weapon to block his attacks as well as a heavy damage weapon that he's weak against in the Kaboom Stick. Also in Zed time, reload speed also is increased for things like your uh, Medic Bat. You can actually reload it faster in Zed time. Uh, same goes with things like the Pulverizer. Also, I've been having a question reoccur in each of these beginner videos, and that is, should you buy armor with Survivalist? Um, you don't really need armor with Survivalist, especially depending on your level. You can start out with 25 additional armor, and you can't take health damage as long as you have that armor. That being said, you also don't really need to worry about armor that much, because regardless of which level 10 perk you take, you're either getting faster heals with your syringe or you're getting uh, better melee stats. So you're more likely going to be using melee weapons that can block and parry. So armor isn't really all that necessary for you um, early on with Survivalist. You can buy it if you'd like, but it's not entirely necessary. All right, now for the second build that I'd recommend with Survivalist. Um, this is going to be a bit different based on the weapons that we choose. So at level 5, we're going to be taking Tactical Reload. This is for Commando, Gunslinger, and SWAT weapons. We're going to be using those weapons this time. We're going to go with Medical Training. This allows your healing darts to heal more, as well as the cooldown on your syringe and healing darts to be reduced, which is great. It means you can heal your allies up much more. This is going to be more of a support um, backline build for Survivalist, but you will still be at least fairly strong at killing smaller things. I'll show you the weapons we're going to be using. And then we're going to take Ammo Vest, which, uh, once again, I would always recommend taking Ammo Vest early on. However, if you want to switch it out later, then you definitely can. That way you can add more weapons to your arsenal or upgrade those weapons that you want to take. Uh, but Ammo Vest lets you carry more ammo and get the healing grenades. The healing grenades are really what we want in this build. Uh, at level 20, I would take Zed Explosion because I don't think we're using weapons that really get any bonus from the explosive uh, area. However, the explosive resistance you might still want, maybe. 
Um, and then at level 25, again, it's your call between Lockdown and I'm Mad impressed. Men. Now, this loadout is going to be an incredibly cheap Turns loadout that turn. you can Block get fairly early loadout. on. You could, if you get lucky like I did, keep the Winchester. The Winchester is a fantastic weapon that upgrades really, really well. It scales really well, but I'm going to sell it. Um, assuming I didn't get it, uh, it doesn't matter either way. Uh, this time, I'm going to go with the Medic SMG, which is a great tier 2 weapon. The Dream Team's back uh, together. That can heal allies very easily. It weighs very little. Uh, its scaling is okay with levels, and it does a lot of damage. Well, it does a lot of DPS uh, to small Zeds. Not so much against big Zeds, but that's all right. We'll couple this with another weapon on. later on that will make up for that. Uh, you could also buy the Medic Pistol in this loadout if you want to go even small cheaper. Uh, and Back that would work out fine too. The Medic Pistol scales incredibly well, and I find it to be a really good gun. So if you want to do that, you can. I'm going to take Medic SMG just because I think that um, it's a bit more user-friendly for new people. High rate of fire, low recoil, um, fairly accurate, is great. Uh, always aim for the head with this weapon. With our first loadout, you really honestly didn't need to aim for the head. The Kaboom Stick body shots are fine, and the Hemo Clobber just wherever you hit something is fine. Uh, this loadout is going to go for more of a headshot weapon route, though. You're going to want to be hitting headshots more often and being able to heal your teammates. Now, I am only recommending two builds and two weapons with each of those builds with Survivalist. However, Survivalist can literally take any weapon and make thousands of builds, thousands of loadouts and make them work. So pick what you like. Um, I know some people can get a little bit overwhelmed with the amount of choices, especially if you were going to pick this class up early because there is just so many choices for it. And you can experiment as much as you would like, or you can stick to something that you know works. Uh, these loadouts are pretty straightforward, pretty easy to learn. Just like in all of my beginner guide lists, every weapon that we're going to be looking at is tier 3 or lower. Uh, the reason for this is just because uh, it might be difficult for beginners to earn enough money, um, you know, maybe you die or something early on, so you can't afford the weapons that you need. So this is taking just very strong base weapons. All right, now for the second weapon that we're, we're going to be getting with this loadout Make is going choices. to be the center fire. The center fire is a fantastic early weapon. It's very cheap. It's incredibly powerful for its level, um, rivaling even as high as tier four weapons. But taking this, this also counts as a gunslinger weapon. So Hurry you will up. get faster reloads with it. Closer. You could, of course, go with a different powerful uh, secondary weapon. You could go with something like the double barrel and not worry so much about the reload speed. You could, of course, go with something like a single 500 Magnum too, because uh, that counts as a gunslinger weapon or, you know, save up for dual 500s, whatever you want to do. I'm not going to be looking at tier 4 weapons in this loadout, but yeah, I would recommend something that is good for the team, but is also just good for you. And the sharpshooter's uh, center fire here is definitely good for you. It can take out big zeds very quickly, it can take down small zeds very quickly. Uh, small zeds also usually don't require headshots, body shots are fine. You can use a medic SMG to kill small things and to heal. And if you wanted to double up on the healing, you could always get something like the Medic Pistol with this loadout, or even save up to buy one of the Medic ARs. Um, you have a lot of options here. Your biggest strength as Survivalist is being able to adapt to really any situation. Um, and that is also probably the hardest thing about Survivalist, is that it's a class that fills whatever is needed. Um, and depending on what your whatever your team needs is going to vary from team to team. I've played plenty of games where all I've had to do is practically just play medic with survivalist and it's been fine because my team knows what they're doing. Other times I've had to play, you know, the big game killer uh, with survivalist so I've had to take like sharpshooter or demo weapons to uh, kill things because my teammates weren't as good at, you know, getting rid of big stuff. Um, some people say that survivalist is kind of a trash tier class and I 100% disagree with that. I think survivalist when played correctly is an incredibly strong class and potentially one of the strongest classes in the game. I would not I would not say that it's one of the weakest ones. Um, it's just the most varied. Uh, one thing that I will recommend that you don't do as survivalist is take other people's weapons if they die and keep them. Obviously it's fine to pick them up and give them back to your teammates. Your teammates will definitely appreciate that. 
uh, but don't keep them. I know there is, I guess, a, re a decent amount of people that do this, especially that are new players because they don't understand how to toss the weapon to your teammates. Um, you know, if you just hold open your weapon menu, whether this be on controller or on keyboard, you can see what the throw weapon is, and then just press that to toss the weapon on the ground. Make sure you toss it to the right person, though. Uh, that will really go a long way in showing that you're a team player. So that's not necessarily a survivalist tip. It's just something that I see more common in survivalists than other classes, except for like maybe support just because you can carry more. So that's pretty much the basics of survivalists. Now, survivalists can vary heavily depending on who's playing it, what you're playing it with. Um, and of course, based on your level of just general skill in the game. Survivalists can be an incredibly strong class. They are by far the most flexible class besides maybe medic, but that's a that's a maybe. Um, they are a great class and there is tons and tons and tons of loadouts that you could go with. Um, keep in mind, there is certain weapons that are cross perk uh, that fit into both the tactical reload and heavens, heavy weapons training. So there are options. Weapons like the FAL count as both a commando and a sharpshooter weapon. Another good example is like the Frostfang counts as both a melee weapon and a ranged weapon. So you, if you have melee expert, you'll actually be able to run faster when you have that weapon out. Um, this does not work for every weapon that can also be used as a melee weapon though. So things like the compound bow and the Mosin don't count as that. So there is a lot of uh, mix and matching that you can do based on just these uh, few skills right here. And then just play to your general strengths. If you're not the best at aiming, maybe go with something like shotguns. If you like being the supportive type of teammate, maybe go with medic weapons. If you like being the heavy hitting uh, person, go with something like gunslinger or demo or uh, sharpshooter weapons. And if you like crowd control weapons, maybe go with SWAT or commando, something like that. Also, definitely look at what your team is lacking, what they are struggling against, and how you can help fill that role. Um, that is Survivalist's greatest strength. So thank you guys so very much for watching all of these beginner guides. Um, I will be doing advanced guides on each of these classes, probably showing off more builds, more loadouts. Uh, those will be coming in the future. And then I also have another list of uh, guides that I have planned as well that are going to be how to beat Hell on Earth with each of these classes. So... Tell me what you think about that. Should be a lot of fun. So if you guys are new here and you're not already, be sure that you're subscribed. That way you can get notifications whenever I put out any sort of video. Give this video a big old thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And tell me what you thought of this video down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your responses. Thanks again, and I will see all of you guys next time. Till then, stay cool, and bye.